So I did my rack tour the other day and people had asked which cards I was using for all my 10 gigabit connectivity because I'm using it in both Zen server and FreeNAS. So these are Chelsea, uh, Chelsea, I'm not sure exactly how to say that, Chelsea's uh, 10 gig E320 cards. This is an older model card and it works great. I've actually bought a handful of these uh, off of eBay, one in each of my servers. Now I bought dual SFP Plus cards. Now, SFP and SFP Plus are very similar, as in they physically look the same. SFP being the 1 gig SFP module standard, and SFP Plus is a 10 gig standard. Uh, there is some interoperability because you can slow this down to 1 gig on the connection as opposed to 10 gig, uh, but all of the equipment we have, including the Unify 16G 10 gig switch is going to be all connected at 10. Now I will note because someone had asked about our Unify 24 port switch and that only has SFP, not SFP plus on it. Uh, the one that we have in particular, and I think all the Unify 24s, you don't get SFP plus on the Unify uh, 24 switches, but you do get it on the 48 switches. So I figured I'd cover that real quick. Now we've chose DAC cables as an option for connecting these. These are direct attach copper twin axe. They make cable management fairly easy. They're kind of designed for either in rack or you can go if you have an adjacent rack there running them over. They're different than the fiber. I mean the fiber is popular if you want to do long runs and you can get a fiber transceiver that fits into SFP and will work and I have tested this generic uh, one here and Unify sells their own uh, fiber interconnect so if you need to do a longer run. Fiber's a little bit harder to work with. It doesn't quite bend as well. It does bend really well, actually. It just will break easier. And it can be a little bit more troublesome to try to set all this up for cable management. So we're gonna stick with the DAC. Now, buying dual cards. The reason I buy dual cards is if you have, in the case of Zen servers, a VM, if you have your storage network, which we do, plugged in, and you then wanna have a virtual interface that also has a 10 gig connection, you could assign the storage here and the virtual interface for your virtual machines over here. That way you don't have any conflicts with the storage. For an example would be if you're pulling a heavy IO on your storage and then you would like to serve that over SMB at 10 gig via the virtual machine, let's say a Windows server that's running on here, you'd want to have dedicated NIC. If not, they would share the bandwidth. Now for our use case, we only have a single one in use. I don't really have a need right now for my VMs themselves to have a 10 gig interface, but it's there. And these cards, like I said, are reasonably priced. Now the direct attached copper is pretty easy to install. Whoops. It's just like USB. You'll get it wrong the first time. It snaps in and clicks. <clears throat> now, a couple options here. If you are setting this up in your home lab and you would say, you know, I just want to have two servers talking to each other. No problem. Go ahead and snap two together. You can have two cards direct attached to each other and it works perfectly fine. You just statically assign the addresses and they can talk to each other without having a switch in between. This is a really convenient way to do it, especially when you're doing testing. And when I build my test stations here on the desk, I do usually set them up this way. It's just really convenient and it saves you the expense of a switch. But in our case, because we have two FreeNAS servers and two Zen servers, and we have a storage network we built, which I'm gonna show you here in a second, we like to keep them all plugged into a switch because that gives us really fast transfers between anything that we wanna do across that network on, and isolate it. All right, so let's take a look at the physical layer now on our network and then we'll get into the software. Okay, we'll start here at the front. So here's our Unify 16 port 10 gig switch. And here is the SFP cables that we have connected there, and these go to the back of the server. Now this is the SFP ports on here, but please note there's no plus next to them. So we've connected the RG45 style from port 19 to port 13, and that's only gonna connect at one gigabit, which is why, I don't know if it shows up on camera, that's green. So that only shows we have a one gig connection and all the white lines, so we have a 10 gig connection here. So those lines all come back this way and down and now they're plugged in over here. So here is the 10 gig interconnects that we have on each of these. And like I said, we have the dual cards, those Chelsea E320s. And it carries on down to each server. And like I said, we have a spare if we need to. So pretty straightforward. 
and you can see the active light when they're plugged in. And know this will be the light for this side over here. Now, the nice thing about these, and we'll get a wider view of my rack here, for cable management, they do have a decent bend radius. So when the door closes, it touches these a little bit, but it doesn't exceed the bend radius on these. It would be a worry if I had a fiber module and a fiber sticking out and then a bend down. All right, we're gonna start here within the Unify part. So with Unify, I love the way that their software makes the layout look exactly like the switch. It's just convenient and pretty. Uh, so we can see that all of these are connected at 10 gig via SFP, just like we've seen when we are looking at the rack. Here is the air rectangle, in case you're wondering what this one is. Uh, that is also an RJ45 10 gig. And here is that one turbo cable that connects from the Unify 24 port to here for the uplink that can bridges this into the rest of the network. And it's only a gigabit because, well, the 24 port's only a gigabit switch. Now, these being the storage network, they're on their own VLAN. And by doing that, that means we have uh, done this in a locked down a setup essentially. So if we look at it, and let's actually go jump over here to the settings, networks, move this over. We have our storage VLAN only, and it's set at VLAN ID 20. And then we go over here to any port that we edit, and we've all chose this as a profile to be 20. Now this network is not defined in my router. And the reason why is because I want to keep the storage network isolated from the rest of the network. That way anything in there is locked down to only those servers. There's no other interference. There's no routing uh, going back and forth or in and out of that network. It is essentially a flat network. Now by doing that and not having even a DHCP server in there, it does mean we have to statically assign these, which is pretty easy to do. Now, the one config change that I did make in the switch itself is under services, enable jumbo frames. Jumbo frames, if you're not familiar with jumbo frames, you can look them up and get way more detail that I'll give you right now. But the short of it is the ethernet frames are set to 1500 by default. A jumbo frame carries 9,000 bytes of payload, but you do have to have a switch that supports it. And it does add some speed to there because for each packet, you're able to get more data squeezed into it. So if you look at the frame type, here's a standard at 1500, here's nine. And overall, you can see the payload side, total transmitted efficiency is a little bit more. In real world performance, yes, you get a little bit of gain on here and it varies by protocol. But generally speaking, if you're on a network that supports it, it will give you a little bit of enhancement on there. There's plenty of debate that I'm not gonna get into about how much enhancement and the real world testing for it. It's easy to do, it doesn't have a cost to it. Uh, there's not really a downside as long as your switch supports it. So we have an enabled jumbo frames. It's the only real change that we've done on this switch outside of defaults. So once that's enabled, now we're gonna go to how we have these all statically assigned. Now. By the way, because these are assigned only that VLAN, I don't have to tag anything within the network interface itself. So you don't, when you're configuring these in FreeNAS or in Zen server, you don't have to make any changes or add any VLAN tags to these because it, under, it looks as if it's one switch when you do that together. So those are all focused only on that VLAN. No other VLANs uh, information is passed across. So we have here, 192.168.10.10 on this FreeNAS server. And let's go ahead and uh, look at some of the, the interface. Exactly, and then we're gonna go ahead and edit. 192.168.10.10, I set them to be slash 24. I've covered this before and someone says, well, you're wasting IP space. Why, I don't know why trolls say the things they say. Anyways, uh, you can set it to whatever you want. The only thing on here are these four servers, so you could make it the net mass smaller habit is slash 24 and in case i add a couple more devices to the storage network it's easy enough to add them to you just got to remember i'm statically assigning all of these then mtu 9000 this is how you pass that option on to get the jumbo frame so i set this to mtu 9000 inside of freenas and we'll look at the new freenas same thing 10 gig we're going to go here and edit 10 gig, here's a static assignment, slash 24. They do all have to match net mass. So whatever net mass you go with, just make them all the same across all the machines you're statically assigning. And MTU 9000. Now Zen Orchestra is a way to do this. 
when you're looking at the Zen server. There's just a couple options here. So we're going to look at network. And I've got it passed over as storage network, M2 9000. But I'm going to show you a different way because the way I find it a little bit easier. I love Zen Orchestra. But when it comes to networking, if you're not clear on how to use it, there's another way you can assign these. So if you open up the XCPNG Center, you can see all your networks. And then you go down here to configure. And this is how you can configure your storage network as an extra network. So it's nice and separated here if you're doing it in the XCPNC. I want to go back to Zen Orchestra in a second and show you how you do that. But if you notice when I'm assigning these, this is 10.15, but it has no gateway because, like I said, we don't want any routing going in there. Now, on our side note, when you're doing this, once you've done this, if you want to, and we're going to head and uh, properties of this, you notice how the MTU is grayed out. The MTU is grayed out because I have it assigned down here. This question has come up before. You want to set the MTU before it because once this has been assigned to the storage network and is using it as a storage network, then it doesn't allow you to edit the MTU. Just kind of a side note, but if you're wondering about that, that's something that's important to note. And the same thing, we're going down here as number two, networking, same thing, storage network. This one's 10.20. So 10.15, 10.20, and it allows you then to do the same things, configure, no gateway. And all these, of course, can now see each other. And when you're connecting to things like the uh, free NAS storage, you do it by IP. You just type into 192.168.10. And then go from there. Now back over to Zen Orchestra. So if you go over to your hosts and go to network, you see all the networks and you can add a network. But where you want to go when you're setting up the networks is you go to pools, pool, network. This is where you can create like the bonded networks and you'll see the options are very slightly different. And this is what allow, this is where you can set the MTUs and configure uh, some of those things. So you can add this. You can kind of get the idea that they're a little bit different. Like I guess the Zen Center seems to be a little bit easier to read when you're building a storage dedicated network um, versus in here because there's two spots you can go for networking. Just wanted to leave that note in there. So you have two options and whichever way you choose to configure it, you can uh, easily change it in either one after the fact inside of here. But only when the storage network's disconnected can you change it in terms of the MTU. Like I said, easy enough to pass the MTU setting. Now, one of the cool things is once it's on here, and I grab this little demo, and we have the disk is uh, Dozer right here, and that is our free NAS, this one here. We'll go over here to the pools to show you what it looks like, storage, pools. These are just a bunch of spinning drives, a bunch of uh, older two, two terabyte SAS drives, but they're reasonably fast. And I'm bringing this up and showing you how they're connected. So here it is, Zen VMs. These are connected via NFS on the 10 gig network. So what kind of speed do you get out of this? We'll just run this quick speed test. Not the most accurate. I'm not getting real in-depth here. But over the 10 gig network, it's reasonably fast. I mean, we're getting a write speed of about 586 megs. Now, what command did I do to run this? Speed test SSH, it's this right here. It's time sh-c writes a bunch of zeros test file 1.9 gigs count 1000 then it syncs the file system and then it removes the file and that gives us like i said a speed of 586 i've done some of the benchmarks on this it's it's reasonably fast it's not quite as fast as a uh, samsung evo ssd but the speeds are pretty reasonable on it over the 10 gig network it's it's not bad. Um, and of course, it goes faster. If I ever get some uh, money to throw at a storage array that is all flash, it would, of course, increase that much because we do have plenty of speed going between these. One other thing that's kind of neat is when you do a migration using Zen Orchestra, Zen Orchestra is aware, so we're going to choose, it's on uh, Zenifer, and we're going to put on Zenifer 2, the other one. We're going to send it over to local storage. It sees not only the pool wide area ETH1, so it says, hey, these servers talk to each other in ETH1. It realizes they also can talk across a link that I just named 10 gig storage. So it's a storage network, but instead of storage, this, because the Zen servers are on that network, they can talk to each other. And this will allow me to migrate VMs. It only takes a couple of minutes to migrate even a live one because they're talking to each other at 10 gigabit through the switch. So that's another advantage you get is not only that you have fast access to the storage repositories that are stored on a 10 gig network, the 10 gig interconnects between the Zen servers allow me to easily pass them right over 
at full speed. Now, last thing I'll show you is, you know, people want to know is the speed test between the servers, and we'll cover that real quick here. So we'll go ahead and log into one of the free NAS boxes. And we're going to run iperf dash s for server dash b, capital B, uh, 192.168.10.8. And what this does is binds it to that IP address. So the servers do talk on other networks. We want to make sure they're only talking across the 10 gig network. This is Tmux for those wondering. That's how I split the screen. Now we logged into Xenifer. And we're going to do iperf3 client 192.168.10.8. And we can see that they're able to transfer at quite fast at 9.9 .9 gigs a second. So we're saturating the network um, between these two. And each Zen server can talk to the other Zen server at this speed. And each Zen server can talk to the free NAS at this speed or each of the free NASs because we have uh, two free NASs and the two uh, Zen servers on there. So I'm able to move data around quite fast through this switch at 10 gig. And of course, if I, because these are all dual cards, if I ever wanted to have the VMs have an extra network interface, Go back over here to hosts, networking, network. I labeled them all as not in use, but this is the ETH4 is storage 10G. This not in use is actually the not plugged in right now. Um, other network interface that is available on there. So if I ever wanted to have the VMs assigned to it, it's pretty easy to do. So hopefully this clears up um, or gives some insight into how the 10 gigabit network is connected for my network and how to set it up because it's pretty straightforward. Um, these DAC cables are reasonably priced. Um, I'll leave links where you can buy these from. You can get these uh, cards. I'll, I'll put the model of the card in there. Uh, that way it stays relevant. I can't really link directly to an eBay link because, well, they're only relevant for short periods of time. But as long as you know the model of the card, I've had no compatibility problems with running these in FreeNAS or Zen server, and that includes in the FreeNAS 11.1 and in FreeNAS 11.2. They're all the same card in all of these. Now, you can mix and match cards, and I have tested it with a couple other cards that I have, and I didn't see any difference in speed or performance on there um, when I was doing kind of some lab setup. Uh, these cards happen to be both low profile and um, full height, so you can get them in either one with different brackets. So please note when you're getting them, get what matches your server. But the nice thing is the card itself does come in different formats. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.